Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, the place where we not only talk about what's going on in the gun world, but also how we're going to fix it together. And the content that we're going to dive into today is the media is quite literally saying what we have been saying on this program out loud. They have let the truth slip out and someone's going to get fired because I cannot believe the things I'm about to show you revolving around the Kansas City Super Bowl shooting. Everything will be linked in the description box below, and I can't wait to hear what you guys think about this one. And of course, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on. Thank you so much in advance for that consideration. And this content is made possible by American Heart for Gold. I'm going to say a quick word, and then we're going to hit it. And the content today is brought to you by American Heart for Gold. And brothers and sisters, with everything popping off around the world, war is cracking off. We've got inflation issues. We've got stock market volatility. We have cash concerns. We have oil concerns. It's a good time to take a look and at least know your options with American Heart for Gold. They are dedicated to offering gold, silver, platinum, coins, and bars for your investing needs. Whether you want to do it delivered to your door or you want an IRA, Roth IRA, 401k, TSP, they've got options. This is something you guys should check out. At American Hartford Gold, they aim to educate clients about investments in the precious metal industry, strive to provide unparalleled customer service built on trust, integrity, and absolute transparency, while holding a goal of achieving 100% customer satisfaction. Click the link in the description or call 844-727-3199. That's 844-727-3199 or text Langley to 65532. Again, that's 844-727-3199 or text Langley to 65532. All right, beautiful people. There's a rule that we have on this channel. Every time that a tragedy happens that the gun control left seizes on for their emotional gain of political points in the short term, we will always wait 24 hours. Now, the reason why we wait 24 hours, particularly in the case of the Kansas City shooting, we always wait 24 hours because the whole story needs to come out before you start launching videos out into the ether across the board saying X amount of things that aren't necessarily true based on conjecture. The left does it all the time. That's their main emotive. Like, that's what they do, right? Well, there's only a few problems about that, particularly in the Kansas City one, and we're going to do all these videos as this data comes out. It's not looking like a mass shooting. It's looking like gang violence that they were shooting at each other and innocent bystanders were hit. That's all conjecture at this point. I'm not releasing that as a breaking news item. However, the left is going to abandon this pretty quickly, and they're shifting. Now, we're going to come back to that, but that's, what we're, that's the catalyst for this conversation. I'm going to show you what the media just said. And then Biden, Kamala Harris, this is important to understand this fight because we're done taking this. You're not going to call us names. You're not going to say it's the effing guns. We're going to have an adult conversation. Check this out. Well, following yesterday's tragic events in Kansas City, President Biden is renewing calls for stricter gun control. In a statement, the president said that it's time to act and called for a ban on assault weapons and to strengthen background checks. So joining me now is CBS News Chief White House Correspondent Nancy Cordes. I mean, Nancy... It's a little, you know, rinse and repeat. I mean, this is what I expect to hear from the president at this time. Um, but, you know, I look at kind of, we are in an election year, and I look at the list of topics and issues that people are most concerned about. And frankly, despite the fact that this was a mass shooting, we had a mass shooting on Super Bowl Sunday in a church, gun violence doesn't rank very high this time around. What reaction are we getting from Capitol Hill? Now, what is she saying there? Again, they're, they're letting the truth slip on accident. Wait till I show you the subsequent two clips after this, because this aired today. Um, what she's saying there is she's decrying the idea that gun control is not higher on the list of this time around, meaning the uh, presidential election cycle, the political election cycle, because their message is not permeating like it used to. It is quite obvious, again, going back to the Kansas City shooting, which is what we're talking about, it's not what they immediately uh, positioned it as. And we're going to cover that as details come out. And we're going to go full missiles on that one. Because this is what happens when you overextend on the left. You're going to get corrected with actual facts. Because we're not just going to let you lie anymore about it. But that's a different thing for a different time. What I'm showing you right now is what Biden just did. While the anchor is decrying the fact that gun control is not even in the top tier list of the importance of the electorate. He goes after assault weapons ban. No assault weapons bans were used. That's weird. He goes after extended magazines. No proof of that. Universal background checks. Has no idea what it is because it looks like early reports are pointing towards handguns and gang violence, which is awkward, especially if you've made it all about assault weapons when they were nowhere in the vicinity except for the cops who had them. Okay? So now 
just to bolster this point, let me show you the second clip and the stuff that she says right here. This should really wake you up. Check this out. Right. I mean, it tends to be one of those issues that ranks really high uh, right when people uh, hear about, learn of a mass shooting, and then it, it retreats behind other issues that are pressing on a day-to-day -day basis, like the economy. Um, and and so uh, it's, it's an issue that the president certainly talks about. It's an issue he knows that is very important to his base. At the same time, uh, you don't hear a ton about it from this White House for a very simple reason, and that is that it's highly unlikely that they can really make any headway on the issue in an election year with a Congress that is led, at least on the House side, by Republicans. They were able to make some incremental progress uh, in the last Congress, uh, but but, uh, but, you know, we are now in an election year, and, and back then, the House and Senate were run by Democrats. Okay, there are three things from that clip alone, and again, wait till they get to the third one. So, three things here. The first one, apparently, the message was now has now changed via whiplash. Um, it used to be that Biden passed the most comprehensive gun control in 30 years, broke the logjam. He's finally made progress. He broke the gun lobby. The NRA is dead, all because of the amazing advances that they've made in the Senate Safer Communities Act. And now all of a sudden it's, well, it's incremental change. It's, I mean, it's just itsy bitsy. You guys, when you zoom out and you see the continuity, it's all over the map. They are straight in propaganda mode. That's the first thing. The second thing, well, you don't hear about it much from the White House. Well, I mean, what? First of all, what planet are you live? What, what channels are you watching? Second thing, you don't really hear about it a lot because, you know, it's an election year and the Senate, um, the Republicans control the House. You know, this channel has been saying that ever since they started this Congress. Every time that they put out a gun control bill and the big hype has come down that they're going to ban ammo or they're going to ban ARs, or they're going to ban extended, they didn't have the juice the whole time. I get flack for it in my comments by saying they don't have the juice for it. And here you go on CBS, them openly saying, well, they just don't talk about it because it's highly unlikely. What? And then now to the third thing. This, this part's really, really important. He has to say something because it's important to his base. Does that make sense on what they're doing? Going back to that first clip, talking about assault weapons ban, enhanced background checks, extended magazines, all three of which were not even present in this. Didn't talk about crime, didn't talk about gangs, didn't talk about multiple groups firing at each other and hurting innocents in the, backfire, in the uh, crossfire. No, didn't talk about any of that because his base demands it. This is a political charade, and that's the whole point. They are exposing it on national TV, and no one's calling them on it. Don't worry, I will. It's okay. We got this, guys. And the third clip right here, here we go. I would say that for the past couple of decades, uh, there's been a great deal of pessimism here in, in Washington. We've seen really horrific uh, mass shootings without much action afterwards. So true. So true. Did, has anybody told Chris Murphy? Mr. Gun Control in the Senate, who's over there telling you the NRA is dead, they've broken the gun lobby, Biden's the best thing ever, he passed uh, gun control over a 30-year backlog, we're finally making progress, we're going to win this fight, and now they're sitting here saying, like, well, it's been, it's been a very bad cloud over this, and there's a lot of pessimism because nothing's changed. Okay, somebody in the Democrat politicians and somebody in the media needs to get together on their messaging because they are directly conflicting with each other, which is typically rare. And we're going to get whiplash from the amount of narratives that are going back and forth between the Biden uh, border crisis and Al Sharpton saying it's an invasion. And now that gun control has a pessimism and nothing's changed in decades. Guys, it's hard to keep up. Thank you so much for spending time with me while we do it. Everything will be linked, as I mentioned, and I can't wait to hear what you guys think. And I am Braden. I will see you later.